Hi folks, <clears throat> well I'm going to Phuket today, day day 6 of cycling Phuket to Bangkok. So last day today, <clears throat> um, 105 k's or something, so into Phuket <clears throat> early afternoon. Uh, pretty good day really, some strong headwinds but also some strong tailwinds. So all in all, it's a pretty um, it's a pretty tough trip, I've got to say. Um, obviously, really, really hot and um, very, very hilly. Much hillier than what I sort of realised. And they say Cambodia is a flat as a pancake, or Thailand ain't Thailand ain't flat as a pancake. But with that, um, with all the hills came a lot of beauty. Coming into, for example, into Khao Lak out of Phuket, going north, Khao Lak about the first port of core really, 100 k's out of Phuket, you come through the mountains and you see the beautiful sea, up the um, up the Myanmar border, and then you eventually get into the mountains, through the mountains, very very scenic, but um, tough gig, no doubt about it, tough gig, uh, when I look at the equipment I used, I think all the equipment that I decided on was correct, uh, I decided on the um, on the Schwalbe Supreme tyre, which was the perfect choice. I thought about the extremes, but I totally overkill. The Supremes were, I think I said in an early video, are probably, I generally think are probably gear higher and a K and a half quicker, was my experience. Never looked like getting a puncture. The roads are absolutely beautiful. And as I keep saying throughout these videos, uh, the great thing about cycling in Thailand is this wonderful safety lane you've got, it's like riding on a footpath all the way. And the drivers, and uh, <clears throat> many many truck drivers, a lot of scary traffic, well you'd think scary traffic but they observe this white line so you're pretty much, um, you're pretty much safe, you know, and I didn't feel daunted by the, by the traffic at all. But the hills, the hills were tough, the hills were tough. So I think I averaged about, um, about 120 k's a day for the six days. <clears throat> All the equipment went perfectly, the tyres were good, the decision to um, upgrade my brakes to um, um, M785s, I think they were, Shimano 785s, hydraulic, good idea, and also I went the, um, the bigger the bigger rotors, the 180 rotors, good idea, coming down <clears throat> those Thai mountain passes when it's a bit wet and you've got full panniers, it's nice to have those, um, those bigger rotors. I've done a few bicycle tours and I still made a mistake this time and I think we all probably do it, just taking too much gear. I, um, I took probably three or four changes of t-shirt, long and short, three pairs of um, cycling nicks, just not necessary, two is plenty and a light pair of, a light pair of um, shorts at night, I don't mean heavy denim shorts, they're really light like um, like sleepwear kind of light cotton things because no one's going to see you're not going anywhere you're going to be so exhausted by the time you do 120, 130, 150 k's some of those days I did by 150 all you're doing is going into a humble humble um, 300 baht $9 room somewhere having a freezing cold shower because I ain't in hot water and uh, you're going to crash in bed you might walk to the to a local uh, food service somewhere and buy some rice so nothing fancy but also something light so so I think if I was doing this again, I'd go two cycling nicks, um, uh, two, two cycling um, changes of shirts, um, a cap, and um, not even a towel. I'm, I, I mean, I bought a towel, but although these places you get are pretty humble, they always provide a, a towel, so you don't even need a towel. I had a good first aid kit. I had supplies for the bike, I carried three tubes, a bit overkill and puncture repair kit, didn't need any of it. Um, what else? I think I think if I go again I would take a GPS because you've got to remember if you don't speak Thai your navigation's got to be pretty good and you can you can get lost. Not lost, you don't know where you are totally, but lost in terms of where you might think you are on the on the highway because the maps are hard to read. Some of the maps are not even accurate, and some of my communications with the Thai people by the road they communicated to me that the maps not accurate. This is not where it should be, and this is not where you think you are. So I think a GPS 
like a Garmin 64 or 62 like that somewhere would be would be a good choice. Next time I do a two like this, I will take I will take a GPS. Um, I had a very good um, uh, four or five hundred dollar German light, which I was really looking for an infinity light off a Dynamo hub. In fact, I'll turn around there. Fantastic piece of gear up to this plug two, which gives a five volt service. You, you probably know about it if you're into bike touring. There's my beautiful, my beautiful expose your light. Now the bummer is that the the carrier that I flew with must have threw my bike bag around a bit because the fitting on um, on the hub got damaged and my bike didn't work, leaving me in a mountain pass one night with no light. So the reason why I tell you that is, if you're going to do a trip like this, you've got to have. And I had, you know, a, a headlight, you know, a, a trekking camping thing that you'd take camping. So I was caught in a mountain pass at night, trying to do a 200k day, which I would have done if I had proper lights, because because you don't know where you're going to find a bed, because the, the course I did, which is Phuket, Kaolack, up the Burmese border, Renong, up to Champon. If you know this area, you'll know these names. Then across these through the mountains, across to the east coast, up through Wai Hin towards Bangkok. So you really are in in you're in no man's land. There ain't no tourist accommodation. You've got to really take luck and find a bear where you can get it. But when you do your research and you look at some of these names. They might say there's hotels, but they're not on the highway. Some of these are resort places, 20 k's off the highway. So I got caught out two or three times, landing in places at night in the afternoon, nothing. And I drove in one place for an hour one night in the dark, thinking I'm going to have to sleep by the side of the road, which I was prepared to do. Um, I was quite prepared to do, then out of the blue, I found a place. So the moral of the story is, um, if you're going to do that route, be prepared, you might have to do that. Um, and if you do find a place, don't be tricked by the word resort. You might see a sign that says resort, that doesn't mean a height five star, it means a very, very humble, a very, very humble uh, six dollar a night room somewhere. And I'm talking about really humble. <clears throat> what else can I tell you? Um, what would I change? I don't think I'd change much. I. I was over anxious about getting water on this trip and when I left Phuket I had tons of water on board. I had about one, two, three, four, five, about five litres of water on board and after two or three days I realised that wasn't necessary because no matter where you are, no matter what outpost you're at, there'll be some lady by the side of the road selling bananas or pineapple right up on the border which is a remote area, there was still water there so in the end I was only dealing with, um, well always with two bins full of full of water but mostly I end up screwing them over myself and I get fresh water at, 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 the, um, at the next place. So there you go, six days, Phuket to Bangkok, arrived here today, average 120 k's or something a day. Um, I don't think I'd do much difference, travel a bit lighter, the bike was perfect and um, it's all good. So I'll sign off, Phuket to Bangkok, bye bike, catch ya.